Hello everyone, this is Rick, and welcome to Astro Club. Random Z, one of our members, was wondering when I was going to do another Q&A. And I checked on it, and I hadn't done one since January. So I figured let's do another Q&A, and this is going to be Q&A number 7. Before I get started, though, I just want to send out my extreme thanks to Starry Astral. She is an unfailing uh, ally of this channel and an extremely talented astral projector in her own right. She's always on Reddit and elsewhere promoting uh, this channel. And I think there's a lot of members who probably found out about this channel from her. So once again, thank you, Starry Astral. You are an astral goddess. Question number one. Why don't I say the D word in NDEs? Of course, NDEs, from an earlier video you know, is near passing away experience. I don't say the D, not because I have some weird superstition or any kind of phobia around the word. The tube, who, who of course, which of course is our host, has a long list of words that if they are said in a video, they do not allow that video to have ads. Now, in and of itself, I could really care less about that. However, when they do that, they don't go out of their way to promote that particular video to other folks out there who might be interested. And that does bother me. So, I try to become familiar with uh, the words that they don't like to see or hear, and I try to avoid those because I want these videos to get out there, and I want them to be heard by people who maybe haven't heard about the channel yet, but are looking for something like it. So I hope that clears that up. Next question is by Creative777. He wants to know, how do I navigate in space? There's really two different ways um, I get around in space. First, if I'd been somewhere before, I have the vibrational frequency, the feeling of the place. So let's say I've been on Mars before in a particular place. All I have to do is conjure up that vibrational frequency of that place and I can then will myself there and invariably I'll arrive there. If I haven't been somewhere before, I find that line of sight works really well. Uh, as a matter of fact, as a child, I became an amateur astronomer because I wanted to know where the various planets were at any one time so that when I projected, I could look in the right place in the sky and then go for a line of sight visit. Uh, if I'm going to pick a star at random to see if there's planets there that might be occupied, then I just sight in on that particular star. And then when I arrive, I'll just check and see if there's any planets of interest. Uh, funny enough, I recall when I was a kid, there, was, there were astronomers who were wondering whether planets were common around stars or or whether they were rare, or, uh, and uh, I remember thinking to myself, boy, I could really answer that question for them, because I've seen a lot of planets around a lot of stars. But unfortunately, I was a kid, and also, they would have asked, how do I know? And I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have been happy with my explanation. The next question is also by Creative777. He wanted to know, would I survive falling into a black hole? This is a funny question because I get it quite a bit. And I'm starting to get a little bit of a uh, um, complex uh, going here, wondering uh, if y'all are trying to trying to get rid of me or trying to tell me something. Uh, no, I, uh, I have never sought out a black hole. Uh, there's a lot of places I wanna go in the universe before I decide to take the deep dive into the deep black. So I'm going to put that last on the list and maybe we'll get there when everything else is done. 
Rim A5555 wanted to know, when do you think someone will ascend the astral realm and then enter the mental realm and above? My answer is pretty simple. When they feel like they belong in the mental realm or above, then that's when they'll go there. Your vibrational rate has to match the realm that you call home. If it doesn't, you will know you don't belong there. If you've ever attended a party, perhaps by invitation of a friend or a friend of a friend, you just feel whether you belong there or whether you're an outsider. And you naturally either stay and have fun or you decide to leave. It's very much the same thing when you're dealing with the, very, uh, the variable planes of existence. Chaz76 uh, wanted to uh, ask a question. Uh, I guess he has a problem. He can only fly a few meters away from his physical body. Then he loses energy and falls back into his body. That's a very common complaint. I had an astral projection myself recently where I had to literally fight to get out of my body and to get, uh, you know, just a little bit away from it. It required an intense concentration, an intense focus of will just to get away. Uh, I, I don't know exactly why it's easy sometimes and it's harder in others. Probably has something to do with uh, the gravitational pull of your body. Uh, it has probably to do with whatever the relative energy state is of the astral body. What I generally do is I focus my will and I determine to get to a particular point in my room. And I focus all my attention on getting there. And once I get there, I pick a next spot. And then from there I go on. It also helps to make a, a little bit of a, uh, an energy draw to concentrate on trying to pull in some of the available energy in the room that will help to raise your vibration. Although that can be very challenging to do when you're that close to your physical body, but it's worth a try. However, that's what I would do. Pick a spot just a few feet away from where you are when you first leave your astral body, get there and then pick another spot and then go from there uh, and good luck to you. Editize wanted to know whether I can enter someone else's dream. I have never attempted to do that, so I really don't know. I know there have been people who have reported seeing loved ones in dreams who they feel actually visited them in that dream, that it wasn't just a manifestation of their own subconscious. Uh, so I, I really can't comment for certain because I have never tried to do that. If anybody has any strong feelings about that subject, please leave a comment in this video. Atzaluth wanted to know, is it possible to project uh, to a low plane on the astral and share consciousness with a human like you did with the prehistoric crocodile. Going into the body of an animal is one thing. They don't have the vibrational protective shield that humans have. At least it's not developed or as developed as the one that humans have. I've been able to go into a number of animals for a period of time. And of course, I know I've mentioned some of the dangers about that in the past. You know, you tend to pick up some of their thoughts. They pick up probably some of yours. And I talked about how after I've been in the crocodile for a couple weeks after that, I enjoyed the smell of rotten meat. But going into a human is something that is, uh, is forbidden. It's against the universal rules, against the universal laws. I've only ever gone into two humans, both of which were versions of myself. Uh, one which was in a parallel reality and one time in the future. I was able to get in for a short period of time because I was like a key 
that was mostly accurate, but a little off. And there was some jiggle room in that key, but it was enough to trigger the pins and, and the lock to open up such that I could occupy that body for a short period of time. But even occupying my own future or parallel bodies, there was a electrical field that gradually grew and grew um, and became more and more uncomfortable, even for me being within that body, such that I was expelled from it pretty quickly after the little experiences that I had. I've never attempted to actually try to occupy or possess if I should use, or if I can use that particular emotionally laden term, the body of another human. And I would recommend that you avoid even trying because as I said, that's one of those universal laws that probably isn't a good idea to try to break. Member TM wanted to know whether I could make or whether anyone can manifest objects on the astral plane. Much like the physical, if you put work into creation of something here on the physical, you can make it happen. On the astral, it's very much the same, although it's quite a bit quicker. You need to put energy and thought and will into the creation of an object that you wish to make um, come into an astral reality. It does require thought, it does require energy, and it can drain you a bit, but you can do it. So the answer is yes. Indigo Wyvern was asking about astral blindness. Some people say astral vision comes from your forehead chakra, uh, slightly above the middle of your two eyes. So what do you think? Where's that focus coming from? Astral blindness and or astral vision are common questions as well. Many people wonder why when they first leave their body, they can't see or their vision is just black and gray. Um, <clears throat> in the matrix, uh, when they were first operating on Neo after he'd been taken out of the Matrix, he woke up on the operating table and he said that what was wrong with his vision it was really blurry. And um, his uh, boss said that, uh, well, you haven't used your eyes before. <laughs> That's why they're not working properly. So your astral eyes, you're not really using your astral vision. So it can take a little while to come in properly. Uh, basically, the farther you get from your body, the clearer your vision should become, especially when you focus on it. Now, the, where is the actual locus of your vision? I think it's basically the third eye chakra where your vision is actually coming from. Although it's very easy to think that it's coming from your eye area because you're so used to your vision originating from your physical eyes that it's real easy to still make that assumption. Although if you really think about it, it's coming more from a, your third eye type area. And if you really think about it, and if you really increase your energy and get used to astral projecting, you'll be able to notice that you actually have 360 degree vision. And that's something that takes a little bit more experience and it also takes someone concentrating on making that happen because I've noticed that I and I'm sure other people have a tendency to ignore that 360 degree vision because we're not used to having it. Uh, so there's a lot of physical leftovers, a lot of physical habits that impact upon our astral body because that's the way we expect it to be and your expectations can really change the quality uh, of your astral projection. Another site-related question by Jesse, uh, Jesse Sandwich Jr. Uh, he wants to know whether it's better to astral project during daylight hours, because he knows that vision can sometimes be a problem. Uh, once again, this is a physical bias. Our physical eyes, uh, with our rods and our cones, require a certain amount of light in order to reflect a 
accurate and a visually uh, uh, acuitous uh, image. However, the astral eyes, astral vision, does not require light in order for you to be able to see something clearly and sharply. Uh, it doesn't need that daylight in order to see. So you can ask to project whenever you like. Just expect to perhaps have the blindness or that gray-black vision to start with and then just go from there. But I guarantee you, you will have the vision that you need. The next question is just one that I get in general uh, on a regular basis. And it's usually asking about the use of drugs and astral projection. Um, will marijuana, THC, uh, mushrooms, or other psychedelics, uh, or a variety of other drugs, will they help me astral project? Will they um, make it uh, more vivid? Will they hurt my ability to astral project? Uh, I like to comment on things that I have personal experience with. I never elected to use um, what's called illegal drugs. Um, when I went to college, I was still very much in a frame of mind that I was trying to prove my astral projection abilities. And the last thing I wanted was, number one, folks to be able to say, oh, well, he's high all the time. That's why he's having these delusions. Secondarily, though, I was also concerned that since I was frequently astral projecting now, at that time, then what might happen if I took these drugs? Would they interfere with that uh, ability? And that was something I certainly wanted to avoid. So I never actively experimented with them myself. So I can't recommend them one way or another. Uh, one idea that I did have for people who are already using uh, marijuana, THC on a regular basis and are trying to figure out if they can include that somehow in their astral projection routine. And maybe they've been having problems projecting. If you're a regular smoker of uh, marijuana, then stop abruptly and then take it and put a uh, supply in your kitchen. And if, uh, as you go to sleep at night, Tell yourself that if you can project to that supply in the kitchen, then you will be able to uh, smoke. Uh, and you may find that that desire will prompt your subconscious to project you out of your body. I know I've successfully used that approach. We've talked about it with things like food and water. So if you want to experiment with that, then you can certainly try and let us know here in the future comment section, how that worked out for you. Bra T commented that uh, the one time he successfully asked to project it, he instantly got sucked back into his body because he was overly excited. And I know we've discussed this before, but this is so important, I just want to go over it again. Uh, when you manage to leave your body, you must control your emotions. Not everybody is familiar with, well, I, gotta, I have to control my fear, right? Yes, you have to control your fear, but you also have to control your joy. Your automated defense system that your physical body uh, has uh, in connection with your astral body, it interprets the signals that come through your astral cord and if it feels strong emotion, whether that be fear or whether it be joy, it defaults to better pull him back quickly because he might be in danger. So if you're hovering above the earth because you shot up like a cannon out of your body and you're looking down on the beautiful planet, and I know you're, you're saying to yourself, how the heck can I contain my joy with that type of experience? Do your best, because if you feel any strong emotion at all, your physical, uh, your defense system, your automated defense system is going to pull you back. So please, please keep that in mind 
as you astral project. Well, I think that's all the questions that I want to handle for this video. Um, we're probably going to do another Q and E, a Q and A rather, uh, again in the near future because I've got a lot more to go over because we just let it go way too long. Uh, in the near future, uh, if not next week, it depends. I'm going to talk about an experience that I had about five to ten million years in the future. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, however, I went and I experienced and saw what was going on in the earth at that point in time and met a very interesting life form that uh, I think you'll be interested to hear about. Well, everyone, uh, I want to thank you. I want to thank all the new members who have come aboard. The channel is growing, and I have uh, everyone listening here to thank for it. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it with those of like minds. Uh, subscribe if you haven't done so already. It's free, why not? If you have subscribed, then hit that bell button and you'll get notifications whenever I post a new video. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them. Uh, as you know, I try to answer them, I read them all, and uh, who knows, they might be in a future Q&A session. I'm Rick, and as always, I will see you on the Astral Plane.